the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God because if I ever find myself in his will and in trouble at the same time, I can depend on him to get me out of it. Ah, oh my son. Can I suggest to all of us that the tomb for us is not the evidence that he is who he says he is. You are the evidence. If we can get the right people in the right place, uh, moving in the right direction, uh, eyes have not seen, uh, ears have not heard, uh, neither have it entered into the hearts of men, uh, the things that God has in store. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to go into your word and to be taught, trained, encouraged, enlightened. And we're asking God that you would guide us tonight as we study. Lord, as a family with Greater Faith Bible Tabernacle, as we gather together in this sacred space, even online, be with us, guide us, cause us to grow, Lord, cause us to mature. Encourage us, empower us because of your word. And Lord, because your word says so, I thank you for healing. I thank you for deliverance as you send your word. Your word says, Lord, and he sent his word and healed them. And so thank you for sending a word tonight that will heal us that will deliver us, that will cause us to change and mature. I pray now, Lord, that you would let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome once again to our midweek Bible study. God bless you and praise the Lord, greater faith. Uh, thank you for being a part. Thank you for always tuning in. For those of you who tune in every week to uh, study along with us uh, in the word of the Lord, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for logging in. Thank you for sharing. For those of you that share, let me put my little reminders up here. Uh, for those of you who share, for those of you who invite others to be a part of Bible study on tonight, thank you so much for helping us to evangelize. Uh, and helping to make sure that what we are learning, uh, we're not keeping it to, to ourselves, um, but that we are growing, we are maturing, and we are achieving all that God has in store for us. And so as a reminder, you see it there on the screen, I think it's on this side, if I do this correctly, uh, yeah, help us uh, uh, evangelize by subscribing to this channel Make sure that you like it. Give us that thumbs up. We're on YouTube tonight. So give us that thumbs up. 
if you have social media such as Instagram, such as uh, Facebook, please post and share, tag others, and let's continue to make those comments in the comments section. Uh, as always, if you are not a member of Greater Faith Bible Tabernacle, we invite you and encourage you to join us in Bible study on tonight as well as we go into uh, God's Word on tonight. I trust that something's going to be said or done tonight that will encourage you, that will enlighten you, that will cause you to grow in your walk with the Lord. Uh, I'm going to ask, if you don't mind, if I, it, I'm going to ask that you would do two things for us tonight. Number one, uh, put guest in the comment section. If you're not a member, put guest in the comment section. If you're new, relatively new here, put guest in the comment section. And then I'm going to ask, if you don't mind, let us know where you're watching from. Greater Faith, we're going to be looking and watching that timeline and watching that, that chat area to see if we see anyone who indicates that they are a guest and you already know Greater Faith what to do uh, when you see that. And... Um, Hopefully you saw the announcements. Uh, they'll be played again at the end of our Bible study tonight. And so I want to get right into uh, our lesson, but I want to remind all of us again on August. Uh, let me get this off of here by myself. So I got to kind of do this by myself. Um, August the 21st, we're going to Front Park. The Lord say the same. And um, we're looking to have a wonderful time of fellowship worship and word, bring your lawn chairs, uh, bring food for your family, uh, bring an open heart. Uh, we're going to be canvassing, as I said before, uh, that neighborhood, inviting others in that area to be a part of our Bible study or part of our Sunday morning service. Uh, again, we will not be live on that day. Uh, it would be too much of a technical uh, feat for us at this time uh, to take our streaming uh, on the road, as it were. And so uh, we apologize for not being able to stream that service in advance. But I'm almost certain, I'm almost certain somebody's going to have a phone and they're probably going to go live. As it stands right now, let me just say that. Let me just say it this way. Um, because there may be a way I'm thinking about it. I just need to know if it's going to work or not. Um, there may be a way to uh, stream, but as of right now, officially, we're saying that we're probably not going to be able to stream. But uh, if we can, uh, you'll be able to see it at the appropriate time. Now, of course, many of you know our Overflow Sunday was this past Sunday, and I cannot, I cannot thank you enough uh, for your sacrifice of time and talent and treasure to those of you who gave whether you are members of this church or not, and you gave, I want to thank God for each and every one of you. Now, I haven't done this in a while um, because I didn't have all of the updates, but this is where we were uh, some time ago. We were at $21,202. But as of this past Overflow Sunday, this is what I want you to see. Can we give God praise for $34,712.40? I'm counting it all. Uh, I'm counting it all. Thank you, Greater Faith. Come on, let's celebrate what God has allowed us to be able to do. 34712 I think of that amount, 8000 of that came in just this past Sunday. A little over 8,000 came in just this past Sunday above our tithe and offering. And again, I can't thank you enough, Greater Faith, for your sacrifice. Now, if you didn't get a chance to sow during Overflow Sunday, you can still sow. Uh, we're not going to deny you the opportunity to sow. You can still sow. But I just wanted to um, give us a little bit of a boost on that particular day. And so thank you, Greater Faith, for helping us to accomplish that goal. And of course, as always, the prayer line is always open for those who desire prayer. You can scan that code there or you can text one word prayer to 866-371-1832. You have two options for prayer. Scan that code or text prayer 866-371-1832. As a matter of fact, uh, for those of you that are watching that have the ability to do that, screenshot 
screenshot this uh, image right now. Screenshot this image right now. And what I want you to do this week, this is what I want you to do this week. As you go throughout your day this week, I want to leave it up for just a moment. As you go throughout your day this week, and I want you and I to be attentive to the conversation. And if it is a conversation, a text, uh, something that you are made aware of that requires prayer, that prayer is needed, I want you to share this information with that person, whether it's, your, uh, whether it's someone in your immediate family, someone in your house, someone on your job. Let's be attentive because I really believe God wants to do something in us being able to pray and pray for others. So take a moment, take another couple seconds, screenshot that so that you can save it so that when you're uh, going throughout the remainder of this week and you uh, come into knowledge that someone desires prayer, uh, it doesn't mean that you can't pray for them, uh, but send them this information and let's make contact that way so that God uh, can bless, bless them in Jesus' name. All right, let's get into this lesson. We started a series somewhat uh, on this past Sunday. It was a beautiful uh, time of Holy Communion, and um, we're grateful uh, again uh, for those that were able to participate in that uh, family meal uh, around the Lord's table. And so uh, we started a, a lesson. Of course, we did not do the text justice. And what I want to do is go back into this lesson entitled, let me put it up on the screen, Lines in the Sand. As a matter of fact, if you, if you don't mind, help me teach tonight. Put it in the chat area, Lines in the Sand. Put it in the chat area, Lines in the in the sand, lines in the sand. It's taken from Joshua chapter number 24 and verse number 15. So grab your Bibles quickly. Uh, Joshua chapter number 24 and verse number 15. I'll put it up on the screen in just a moment. Let's get into the word of the Lord. Please make sure you share this lesson with someone. I believe it's going to be a blessing uh, to the, I know it's going to be a blessing because it is the word of the Lord. All right. So here, here's the scripture, Joshua 24, verse number 15. And I mentioned uh, how uh, God had been dealing with me about this. And so we're going to take our time and work through this series. The Bible says these words, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye now dwell or live in. But as for me and what else? My house, we will do what? We will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, uh, again, this... Uh, lesson, this Bible study, this prophetic word um, really rested on me almost a month and a half ago. Kept hearing the, the phrase, lines in the sand, lines in the sand. And one of the things I uh, discovered uh, was God led me rather to Joshua 24 and 15. And in Joshua 24, 15, of course, we read Joshua is um, giving the people of God an opportunity to make a decision, to make a decision. And that's really one of the themes I keep coming back to as a pastor in reminding the people of God that you have the ability to make choices in life. Sometimes we go through life, I believe, as if uh, we just have to deal with everything that we're dealing with. I think some of us believe that we, that we must put up with all of the things that we're putting up with. And I'm here to suggest to each and every one of us that you have the ability to make 
choices in life. Life, as they say, is choice driven. You can make choices if you so desire. Some of the choices that you make, people will like. Some of the choices that you make, people will not like. But never get to a place where you feel as if or you begin to believe that you can't make choices. You can make choices. You don't like the house? Get another one. Don't like that car? Get another one. Don't like that hairstyle? Choose another one. Are you still with me? You can make choices. Don't like that job? Go out and get another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and with the ability to make choices, it may not be the easiest thing for you to do, but it doesn't mean that you cannot make a choice. My sister-in-law reminded me yesterday we were talking and I just want to take a moment and thank the saints uh, for praying uh, for our family uh, right in the middle of that service or toward the end of that service after praying for uh, Deacon Barksdale on behalf of his brother Bo, uh, I was uh, uh, informed by my wife uh, that uh, there was a family emergency uh, within my immediate family that had just occurred. And so we're still, as of me talking to you right now, we're still in the throes of that. But I just wanted to take a moment and thank you. But my sister-in-law, we were talking on yesterday uh, Lady Kim Fair, we were talking and she reminded me of a series that we shared some time ago entitled Difficult But Doable. Some of you may remember that, Difficult But Doable. And sometimes we get to a place where we think that just because it is difficult that it is impossible. Just because it's hard doesn't mean that it's not impossible. And so the choices that we make get right into this. The choices that we make um, are choices that I really want us to understand. May not be the easiest thing to do, but you can make choices. Somebody put it in the comment section. Life is choice driven. Come on, put that in the comment section. Life is choice driven. You, some things you don't have to endure. Some things you don't have to put, even with yourself. <laughs> yeah, e e even, even with what you do with your own life, there are some things you don't even have to put up with out of your own self. You can draw a line in the sand and tell yourself, we are no longer doing this. We're no longer saying this. We're no longer thinking this. You have the ability. I can't stress that enough. You have the ability to make choices. You and I have the ability to make choices. Now, we mentioned this on Sunday that when it comes to lines in the sand, what we are referring to is marking a line in our life from which you are determined not to cross. In an effort to ensure success in a particular, ensure success in a particular should be area of life. Let me see if I can change this real quick. I was rushing uh, this morning. Let's see if this looks a little bit better. All right. In a particular area of our lives. In a particular area of our lives. So the idea is that we are choosing to shift a particular area. Now, to, to, to shift in that area, we have to make a decision. We have to draw a line in the sand. That's what Joshua was doing with the people, drawing a line in the sand and indicating to them, you have to make a choice. Either you're going to do this or you're going to do that. All right. So the whole concept of lines in the sand, let me see if I can do this. Uh, we added a couple of new features. And so let's see if we can work this uh, on tonight. All right. Lines in the sand, I think we are looking at this now, lines in the sand could affect the following areas. It could affect your budget. 
You draw a line in the sand. I want to save more money. Well, for me to save more money, I have to draw a line in the sand in how I deal with my finances. I have to draw a line in the sand. Drawing a line in the sand could affect your education. I'm no longer going to uh, deal with just having my GED. I'm going back to school. I just don't want, hear me, just a bachelor's degree. I want a master's degree. Draw a line in the sand. Now, you're drawing a line in the sand. It doesn't have to be, you know, a two-year, four-year college. It could be just determining I'm going to spend more time in research, buying more books, reading to widen um, my ability to have information at hand. So I can participate in conversations and participate in other areas of life, all right? So education, I'm not just referring to, you know, one year or two year um, uh, of college, you know, it could just be, I'm, I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm going to do more reading than streaming. Are you still with me? Okay, line in the sand, it could affect your relationship or your relationships with your children, with your spouse, with a boyfriend, with a girlfriend, with a fiance, with coworkers, with friends, with associates, drawing a line in the sand could affect those relationships. And I want, I want to say this uh, very clearly. When you and I make decisions and draw a line in the sand that can affect our relationships, please again understand, Everybody may not like it. Everybody may not agree with the line that you make. Well, he thinks he's all this or she thinks she's, you have to deal with the, with the blowback, but don't let the blowback cause you to stay put where you are. No, keep pressing ahead. Keep moving in the right direction. Just know that when you draw a line in the sand, everybody's not going to be happy. Everybody's not going to be able to be appreciative of the change that you've made in, in your life. All right, let's go a little bit further drawing a line in the sand, it might affect your mental health, your overall mental uh, well-being, emotional well-being. Drawing a line in the sand, it could also affect your physical well-being, all right? I, I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm going to lose 20 pounds by the end of the year. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm going to stretch more every day. I'm drawing a line in, in the sand. Uh, and, and I'm going to add muscle mass. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm going to take this out of my diet. I'm going to add this to my diet. Are you still with me? Drawing a line in the sand can affect these areas. Can I also suggest to you the last one? Drawing a line in the sand could also affect your relationship with God. I'm too far away from God, so I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm not going to do the things that I used to do in an effort to get closer to God. That's what fasting does. I would normally eat around this time, but because I'm fasting, I am actually going to uh, uh, not eat or not eat certain things for a period of time. And I'm going to spend that time spending time in the presence of God reading his word. Why? Because I'm drawing a line in the sand. I want more out of my relationship with God. As a matter of fact, let, let, let's, let's do this. How many want more out of your relationship with God? How many desire more out of your relationship with God? Come on. How many of us know, listen, there's got to be more out that I can get out of this relationship with God. And I want more out of my relationship with God. If that's you, you can draw a line in the sand. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to read and study my Bible more than I have in times past. Why? Because I want more out of my relationship with God. So I'm drawing a line in the sand and it has the ability to affect all of these areas in my life. Let's go further. The series context is found really in Joshua chapters 23 and 24. In one of Joshua's final addresses to the nation, he, remi he reminds them and he warns them. We said this on Sunday, I believe, that in Joshua 23 and 24, Joshua takes the time to warn and remind, to warn them and to remind them. Now, Joshua is not the young Joshua that we meet, you know, who's Moses' minister. 
He's not at this time. He's not the young Joshua uh, who's uh, taking over after the death of Moses that we see in, I think, chapter number one of the book of Joshua, where Joshua, where the Bible says, now after the death of Moses, uh, the Lord speaks unto Joshua and tells Joshua, take people, you know, across, you know, this Jordan and go into the land that God had promised them. Please understand when we meet Joshua in this text, Joshua is an old man. Joshua is not a young man at this time. Joshua is an old man and Joshua is doing what his predecessor did in that Joshua is spending time giving his, uh, this nation some final instructions. This is what I want you to pay attention to. This is what I want you to do. And so he spends the time reminding them and warning them, reminding them and warning them. Pastors do it all the time. Preachers do it all the time. We remind and we warn sometimes. I know it's a heavy word to use, uh, but I'll use it for the sake of this series. He reminds them, but then he warns them. I want to show you some things uh, in, in the scripture. Um, and I said this on Sunday, I believe. I said this on Sunday. Now, when it comes to what God is allowing Joshua to remind them of. He reminds them, catch this, of God's goodness to promote obedience to the God that brought them out and, and the God that brought them this far. All right? He, he, he's, he doesn't want them to spend a whole lot of time. Um, uh, I just saw a whole other mistake. I, I was rushing. Y'all forgive me. should be that brought them. Y'all may see a whole lot of other mistakes in here, um, dealing with a whole lot. But God is able. God is able. Now listen, he's reminding them, <clears throat> even though I misspelled it, he is reminding them so that he can promote their obedience to God, to the God that brought them out of Egypt, out of bondage, through the wilderness. But he's also warning them so that he can protect, catch this, he can protect, they can protect as a nation, their momentum. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to make sure that their momentum has been protected. Because God had done some things for them that they have now begun to enjoy. All of the enemies have not been done away with, but some of them have. They have not moved into, watch this, all of the promised land, greater faith, but they've moved into a portion of it. And greater faith, can I just share with you that, that there are some things that we have moved into as it relates to the vision that God has laid upon uh, us as an assignment, but, but we've not seen all of it. There's, there's way more for us to accomplish, to utilize the space that God has given to us. And, and I, was, I was listening um, and another uh, pastor who had moved into uh, 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 moved into a new building, uh, moved into a new building, and their guest speaker was ministering that night and one of the first days in their new building. And one of the things that the guest speaker reminded them of is that God never gives them more space. And hear me, greater faith. God never gives us more space for us to continue to do what we've been doing. I hope this makes sense. God never gives us more space just so that we can continue doing what we've been doing. All right. And so so the, the idea is God has given us more so that we can do more than we've been doing. And we've been doing a little bit more even during the pandemic. We've been doing a little bit more by way of vision. But there is so much more. Somebody help me teach tonight and put in the comment section. There is so much more. Put it in that chat area. There is so much more. And I need you and I to plug in so that we can see the more that God has in store for us. We're seeing things through the eyes of faith and through the eyes of faith. 
I see what God wants to do on this campus. I see a revitalization of ministry on this campus. I see a premier teaching ministry on this campus that emanates from the east side of Buffalo. And I know people say all kinds of things about, you know, East Buffalo or the east side of Buffalo, whatever, you know, vernacular you want to use. But I'm here to tell you that God has and will continue to raise up a people. God has and God will continue to raise up a people that can be the advertisement of the kingdom of God to our world, to our society, to this district, to this neighborhood. Hallelujah to God's name. Glory to God's name. Let's let's go a step further. He reminds them. He reminds them. He reminds them. Look at Joshua chapter number 23, verses 3 through 5. I'm in the New Living Translation on the screen. He says, Joshua says to him, this old man Joshua, he's seen some things. He's experienced some things with them as a nation. So what does he say? You have seen everything the Lord your God has done for you during my lifetime. The Lord your God has fought for you against your enemies. Catch that greater faith. He says, I allot it to you as your homeland, all the land of the nations yet unconquered, as well as the land of those we have already conquered from Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. What is he saying? He is saying to them, of the nations that we have conquered, we're in their land now. And that land has been divided by tribe. But because we know where we're going, God, I thank you. Joshua says, I have already allotted the land per nation, even of the land that we have yet to accomplish or yet to acquire. God, I thank you. That's vision. Joshua says, I may not get to, it's almost like Dr. King, I may not get to uh, the fullness of the promised land. But I want you to know it's already been divided, even though you haven't conquered the people that are there. I hope this makes sense. <clears throat> Excuse me. Watch what he tells them. He says, I've already allotted the land. He says in verse number five, this land will be yours for the Lord your God will himself drive out all the people living there now. You will take possession of their land just as the Lord your God promised you. Joshua says, you're going to get it. It's going to happen. He's reminding them that God has brought you so far. Greater faith, hear me. You've made some progress this year. In your personal life, you've made some progress this year. You need to remind yourself and remind your current test that where you are now, you didn't start it this way at the beginning of the year. Where you are right now, the mindset that has now changed, please understand you're not where you used to be. And because of that, you need to remind yourself that even though you're facing something right now, God has not forgotten about you. I need this. I need someone to hear this. There's wisdom for where you're de- for what you're dealing with right now. I want to say that again. There's wisdom for what you're dealing with right now. I want to say it again. There's wisdom for what you're dealing with right now. And the Bible says, let every one of us who lacks wisdom, let them ask of God that gives it freely. Somebody put that that verse of scripture, book, chapter and verse there in the chat area. Let any man who lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that gives it freely and upbraideth it not. In other words, God's not going to punish you for asking for wisdom. He wants you to have wisdom. I hope this is making sense. So that's what Joshua says. He's he's reminding them what God does, had already done. But notice what he does next. He warns them. This is Joshua 23, verse 6 through 8. He warns them. What does he say? So be very careful to follow everything Moses wrote in the book of the instruction. Then King James says the book of the law. Do not deviate from it, 
turning either to the right or to the left. Make sure you do not associate with other people still remaining in the land. Do not even mention the names of their God, much less swear by them or serve them or worship them. But rather, he says, cling tightly to the Lord your God as you have done until now. Joshua says what you have been doing to get you where you are now. He says, hold tight to that. Don't change that. Don't deviate from that. The progress that you've made in your life, don't don't throw in the towel now. Don't deviate from the the system that God has given you, the system of wisdom, the decision-making process that God has given you to make those leaps in faith, in your personal life, in your finances, in your health, whatever it is that God has given to you and I to make that momentum or to shift or to make that progress, don't change it now. Push ahead. Go further. Go deeper. Go longer. Let's see all that God has in store for us. But notice what he says. He says, you are now in the land with some of the people that you're getting ready to conquer. And he's warning them about connection. I want to spend just a moment here on connection. I have to be careful who I connect with. I want to say that again. I have to be careful who I connect with. There's a saying that people are using now uh, over and over again, protect your peace. You know, some of us, we've heard people say that. Some of us have probably said that. And what we're literally saying is, Do what you can do and should do by the grace of God to protect the peace that God has given to you. I hope this is making sense. I hope this is making sense because Joshua literally tells him, he says, listen, don't deviate. Be careful. Don't get blessed and go crazy. (laughs) Don't get blessed and then forget the God that blessed you. Don't get, don't, don't pray out, pray into, pray through till you get a breakthrough. And then when God blesses you, hear me, don't get to a place where you now, you know, you throw off all restraints. No, he, he says, be careful. He says, cling tighter to them. He, he says, don't associate with these other people. Now he's not saying don't talk to, don't, um, uh, um, uh, 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 be around, avoid at all costs. He's not saying that because part of the Jewish law, hear me carefully, part of the Jewish law was that even if strangers passed through their land, that they were to entreat them, not as strangers, but to entreat them almost like family. And he says, do this because you have to remember all the years that you wandered around in the wilderness. And so when God blesses you, he says, and you get into your land, he says, if somebody is, is, is traveling through your land and then somebody is trying to get you uh, or get through your land and, and they may need a little help. Maybe they're traveling from a far country and they end up in your land. Remember how you traveled and wandered around in the wilderness. Be nice to them. Pour into them. Supply them if you can. Help them out if you can. That's what he's saying. So, he, so, so that was the law. So he can't be saying, you know, avoid them at all costs. What he's saying is you have to watch your connections. A watch, watch associating with people who don't believe what you believe. It is what we refer to, what the scriptures refer to as being unequally yoked. Mm. I don't know if I should go any deeper than than this. He, he, He says, watch your association. They don't serve the same God you serve. Can I can I share something with all of us tonight? And I hope it makes sense. Oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm going. It's going to sound. It's going to sound. <laughs> um, th- th- there are some people. If you ask them, are they saved? Are they Christian? They'll tell you yes, because the, even they know it's a good thing to be saved, to be born again, to be a Christian. 
But in them saying such, if you're going to be connected to, the, to them, you got to make sure that you're not yoking yourself up with someone unequally. When animals were yoked together, I'm doing all my time. When animals were yoked together, if they were unevenly yoked, some of the burden would fall on one more than the other. Or sometimes when they were unequally yoked, you had a larger animal with a younger animal or a smaller animal that was not as strong. And if you're not careful, that, that, that older animal will pull that younger animal over into another direction. That's unequally, that, that's what it means by being unequally yoked. The word of the Lord says for us not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Sometimes there are some people, and it's not just talking about salvation. I want, us to, I, want, I want you and I to hear this tonight. It's not just talking about salvation. There are some people who are not at the faith level that you are. You've got to watch your association with them. There are some people who, who don't believe that God can do and will do what you are believing God for. Watch your association. Even in the church, it is sad to say there are some people when they hear the vision, there are some people that say, you know what? I believe that God's going to do this. I believe that da, 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 da. And someone else will say, well, I don't know. You got to watch your association. Because God is trying to do something and God is doing something in your life, but you have to watch your connections. He tells them, let me put this on the screen again. Notice what he says. He says, don't even mention the names of their God. Yes, Lord. I'll say it. Yes, Lord. Thank you for bringing that back to me. He says, don't even mention their gods, much less swear by them. In other words, don't cut covenant by them. Don't live your life based upon their system. That's what he's saying about, you know, these false gods, these, 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 he says, don't worship them. Why? Because they are in God. I'm not going to have time. I'm looking at my time now. I may not be able to finish. What is he suggesting? One of the things that he's suggesting in the text is when you worship an idol, just like when you worship God, there is a system of living that is attached to your worship. See, I can't worship God and then do everything else that's not in line with what I just did when I worshiped God. Hmm. I, I, can't, I can't say as a worshiper of God that I'm worshiping God, but I'm I'm robbing banks at the same time. I'm just throwing something out. Something that sounds so crazy and outlandish that none of us will think that I'm talking about you. So it, it is, it is this, it is this, um, it is this, uh, you know, the worship of God comes with a system of beliefs, which also comes with a system of how I live my life. And so what the Lord is saying through Joshua, he says, listen, don't even mention their names. I'm seeing more and more of us who claim to be saved, that we are mimicking the language of those who do not worship the God that we serve. I'm seeing way too many, uh, uh, you know, horoscopes and, you know, what's your sign? I'm seeing way too many out of the people of God. I'm seeing way too many because we're picking up on the language and it won't be long. If I pick up on the language, I'm going to pick up on the lifestyle. If I pick up on the lifestyle, I'm going to be trying to mix prayer and saging at the same time. Y'all not going to talk to me today. If I'm not careful, I will find myself, you know, saging and then praying at the same time. He says, don't even mention their gods. In other words, don't even use their language. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You know, I, I, I get, I tickle myself. I tickle myself. 
in that there are times when, you know, I'm communicating with people via text message or, or email, you know, they'll say good morning or they'll say good afternoon or they'll say good evening or something like that. And I'll say, praise the Lord. <laughs> now, it, it, there's nothing wrong with saying good morning. There's nothing certainly wrong with saying good evening, good afternoon, you know, hello, how are you doing? There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just wired differently. And so if you, if you text me good morning, I'm going to say praise him. <laughs> praise the Lord. PTL. Blessings. Because that's my language. Because that's how I live. That's how I live. Again, there's nothing sinful about saying good morning. You can still text me, email me and say good morning, pastor. Good morning, bishop. Text me. There's nothing wrong with that. But you're going to find out I'm going to keep saying praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God's name. Hallelujah. Praise him. Yes. That, that's, that's, oh God, I'm getting too excited. I'm getting too excited. Let me continue on. He, 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 he warns them. Then he reminds them. Here's another reminder in Joshua chapter number 23 verses 11 through or nine through 11. For the Lord has driven out great and powerful nations for you. Look what God did for you. It's a reminder. He drove out nations bigger and badder than you. He gave you the promotion. You didn't deserve it. Mm hmm. You didn't have the experience. He gave it to you anyway. He's, he's telling Israel, listen, God did some things for us that we did not deserve and we didn't do on our own. He's reminding them of this. Watch what he says. The Lord, your God, he drove out great and powerful nations before you and no one has been able to defeat you. Verse 10 says each of you will put to flight a thousand of the enemy for the Lord your God fights for you just as he promised that he would. Verse number 11, so be very careful to love the Lord your God. In other words, God's done some things for us. God's done some things for you. God's giving you some momentum. God's giving you some progress this year. God's giving you some, pro some progress this year. Hallelujah. I get stirred up when I start talking about the Lord. I get stirred up talking about the word of God. Hallelujah. I get excited. Hallelujah about the things of God. And I want you to understand. He, he tells him, he says, listen, God's done some things for you this year. Hallelujah. If you know that God's done some things for you, <laughs> uh, testify. Hallelujah to God in, in, in the chat area. Testify. Hallelujah to God in that comment area. He's done great things for me. Come on, put it in the comment section. He's done great things for me. Hallelujah. He's done great things for me. Hear me carefully. Hear me carefully. He's reminding them. He warns them. He reminds them. Here's just another reminder. God's going to fight for you. This is, this is how tough the, 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 your support is. This is how strong your support is. He says one of you should be able to put a thousand to flight. Now, for some, you, you understand, he's using some figurative language here. But what he's suggesting is, if you are a nation of over a million people, and one of you can put a thousand to flight because of who is on your side, no one's going to be able to stand against you. You have to know who's on your side. And I'm not talking about just your spouse and your children, your prayer partner. You, you have to know who's on your side. You have to know that heaven, somebody needs to hear me tonight. You have to know that heaven is backing up your decision because you are walking in faith because you are doing what God's called you to do. You have to know that heaven is backing up your choices. He's backing up your decision making process. Let me go a step further. He warns them. He reminds them. He reminds them. He warns them. Here's another warning. He says, the Lord has driven out the people there. And so what he does is, uh, let me move on, because I'm, I'm not going to be able to finish when I need to finish. But, but here it is. The warnings, here's the reminder. The warnings were not to decrease their life's fulfillment, but rather to protect their momentum. God's done some things. You have to continue. It's, it's almost like, um, how can I say this? It's like, you know, uh, choosing, drawing a line in the sand regarding your health. 
and you've done it for the last 30 days, 60 days, you're starting to see a change in your memory, a change in your energy, a change in your waistline, a change uh, in your definition. You're starting to see something there. The headaches are gone now. You've got momentum, you know, you, uh, more motion going now. Watch, watch. He says, if you want to see more of that, you're going to have to continue. You've got some momentum, but you got to be able to continue. You've got some momentum, but you got to be able to continue so that you can do all the things that God intends for you to do. Now watch this. I'm going to try to close in the next 10 minutes. I think I can do this. Let's see if we can close in the next 10, 10 minutes. John Maxwell, uh, he used to pastor, but uh, he's done leadership training for churches, Fortune 500 companies all around the world. Um, some of you may even have some of his books um, in your own personal library. John Maxwell calls momentum the big mo. That's, that's his, his nickname for momentum, the big mo. In June of 2011, he wrote an article on momentum makers and momentum breakers. Momentum makers and momentum breakers. And what I want to do, hopefully, today is I want to share some of what's in that article. The time that I have left. <laughs> I want to try to share some things uh, here. So, so let's go to this screen. Let's go to this screen. All right. We'll deal with some momentum breakers, things that will break your momentum in God, break the momentum uh, in your life, in your business, break the momentum in achieving some goals. So, so we'll run through some momentum breakers and then we'll run through a list of momentum makers. All right. Here are the breakers. Some of them double mindedness. Well, I think I'm going, Oh, I don't know if I'm going, I think I should. Oh, I don't know if I can. Oh, Double, the Bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all of his ways. Being double-minded will break your momentum. All right? Can't be indecisive and maintain your momentum. You got to be able to uh, hear the voice of God, get the wisdom, put it into practice. Let's go a step further. The next thing we see is, and I want, I want us to catch this greater faith, a momentum breaker, the past. You were doing so well until you started looking back the other way. In, in the book, I don't have it uh, on my desk here. It's probably at home on my desk at home. One of the principles in the book entitled, hear me carefully, The Autopsy of a Deceased Church, one of the signs that a church is on its way out is when the past is the hero. Nothing can compare to what has already been done. So the past can become a momentum breaker. Celebrate the past, but don't let the past handcuff you. Celebrate what God has done in your life. Celebrate what God has done in your family. Celebrate the, 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 the degree, celebrate what God has allowed you to be able to accomplish, but don't allow the past to become your cap. Don't allow the past to become your cap, your ceiling. Here's the next one. Here's the next momentum breaker. Individualism. And we live in a world where people are celebrated on being their own individual. But can I tell you, if everybody starts becoming their own individual and, and there's nothing, and I want you to hear me very carefully, because I need to say this um, uh, gingerly, if I can say it that way. Individualism in and of itself is not a sin. You need to be yourself. Your DNA, your fingerprint says that you're already unique. All right? But being an individual as it relates to momentum within a group can often stunt 
what God is attempting to do and the progress that you want to be able to make. It, it, it looks like um, Achan in the Old Testament. In, in the early days of Joshua's leadership, they go into a particular place, they go into Jericho, and God says, this is a devoted place, it's mine, everything in it belongs to me, bring it to me. Achan goes in, he sees stuff, and he starts taking it for himself. I know God said it all belongs to him, but I like it and I'm going to keep it for my, what was he doing? He was operating in individualism. He wasn't operating as a part of the group. He was doing something different. You know, some of us, um, and I always date myself. So, you know, and by now y'all already know, you know, I'm old or raised around old people and things. Um, Watching Sesame Street one time, they, they would have, so that we would learn how to tell the difference between one thing or another, they played that game, you know, they put four, you know, blocks on the screen and there are images going around in all four um, things and, and they'd sing that song, you know, one of these kids are doing their own thing, one of these kids are, is not the same, you know, and they wanted you to point out the one that wasn't doing you know, what everybody else was doing. Are you still with me? And so a lot of times that's how we are even in church, sadly. We, we, <laughs> we're so individualistic in nature that we become territorial. And we become so territorial that the group can't move forward because everybody's trying to do their own thing. And so that can become a momentum breaker. Let's go a step further. Critical attitudes. Nothing is ever right. There's always a complaint. No matter how good something is, there's always a complaint. You know, no matter what it is, someone's always going to say, well, you got to watch out for this. Well, you got to watch out for that. Those are the people that don't go far. Those are the people who don't accomplish much because they spend more time with the what ifs. There's a scripture, I think it's in Proverbs, that talks about how... Um, the scripture says, I think it's, I'm paraphrasing, it says a lazy man will not work because they say there's a lion in the street, you know. In other words, they're saying there's difficulty out there, so I'll just, you know, I'll just stay put. Not knowing you need to go to work so that you can have money, so that you can pay bills. And so sometimes people are so critical in your life and they're critical. And you have to make sure that you're not self-criticizing to the point where you're paralyzing your own self and the things that God wants you to accomplish. And look at them at time. So you have momentum breakers, critical attitudes. You know, somebody in the group always has something negative to say. Someone else in the group always is, 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 is the downer. You know, we've got wonderful weather. Yeah, but it's too hot. We've got wonderful weather. Yeah, but it's too cold. You know, we, we got the loan. Yeah, but we got to pay it back. It's a loan. It's meant to be paid back. You got to watch critical attitudes. They can break momentum. Here's another one. Tradition can break momentum. Doing the same thing over and over and over again can break momentum. Apathy, lazy, lethargic, no passion. These are momentum breakers. Dishonesty, lying, that can break momentum. Hear me carefully. That can break momentum. David said, Behold, thou desire truth on the inward part and in the hidden part, that will make me to know wisdom. I hope this is making sense. I hope this is making sense. Ingratitude, not thankful for anything at all. Those are momentum breakers. You're doing well, but you came up against this, came up against that. All right. Um, should I continue? Should I, should I bring you bring us into this other uh, column where we talk about momentum makers? What will generate momentum? What will maintain momentum? Increase that momentum? Let's do this real quick. I don't have time. We'll come back to it. The Lord say the same on this coming Sunday. But let me do this real quick. Real quick. Let's do it. All right? You have focus. Focus will make momentum. Narrow the scope. 
narrow. Don't be all everywhere. You, you, you can't have your mind in all kinds. Of, no, 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 no. Please make sure that we understand that we are moving in a particular direction. We're focused on what God has said and we build momentum through focus. The future, always looking ahead, not just stuck, not stuck where we are, always looking ahead. And it makes people nervous. I know it. It makes people nervous because they don't see themselves in the future. Sometimes God has to help us to reinvent ourselves so that we can be useful in the future. Don't, don't complain about it. Reinvent yourself. Get to a place where you're learning new skills, learning new talents so that you can you know, be prosperous and, and usable in the future. Builds a momentum. Teamwork builds momentum. You see what, what's going on here in the chart? It's almost the opposite. Critical attitude can kill momentum. A constructive attitude. How can I get better? What do I need to do to change so that this can be better? That's a constructive attitude. How can I do this better so I can have greater results? Tradition, momentum breaker. Creativity, and that's something else that scares people. Creativity is a momentum maker. Every company that, that grew, every company, hear me carefully, every company, every tech uh, company that, that really amounted to something, it was their creativity that caused them. Microsoft, Apple, uh, Instagram, all of these companies that people are using, iPhones, iPads, MacBooks, I don't know about these Android stuff, but, but uh, creativity, creativity, it helps to build momentum. Passion, not being apathetic, but being passionate about the future. It can build momentum. I'm over time. Let me end here. Character. Character can build momentum. Say what you're going to do. Do what you say you're going to do. Say what you're going to do. Do what you say you're going to do. It helps to build momentum. Know what God has said about your life. Settle that into your own spirit. Say it with your full chest and understand that God's moving you in the right direction. Here's the last one. Being grateful. Showing and expressing gratitude. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for what God is doing. I'm going to give you one last principle, and then we'll stop for tonight. Here's one last principle, and then we'll stop tonight. Protect your progress. Protect your progress. If God has given you progress, protect it. If God has allowed you to, um, to move beyond where you used to be, protect your progress. And the best way to do it, is to draw a line in the sand. The best way to protect your progress, draw a line in the sand and understand that you have the ability to choose to see the more that God has in store for you. I hope this makes sense tonight. I think that's all I have um, tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Lord say the same. I will see you on Sunday morning. The Lord say the same. I'll see you on Sunday morning. Let's pray. Let's pray. Remember to give tonight. But let's pray. Let's pray tonight that God will seal this word in our hearts. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us of what your word says to us. We're asking God that you would allow this word to find a resting place in the hearts of your people. Cause us to grow because of this. Lord, cause us to change because of this. Help us, Lord, not to get weary in well-doing. Help us to reap if we faint not. God, I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Watch these announcements. Don't forget to give. Thank you for what you did this Sunday, this past Sunday, uh, in the overflow uh, offering. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You still have time to give. I hope to see you soon. God bless.
place in the whole wide world is in the will of God because if I ever find myself in his will and in trouble. Thank you.